working in child protection, which is kind of where I started my career with kids and adolescents, it is about you know, thinking very much about the task in hand and in a sense that kind of enables you to not cut off but think about what you do with the material you're hearing. When my children were very little and I was working in child protection, I, I had one particular case I was working on and it wasn't the story from the paedophile that affected me, it was the story from the mother that I interviewed who wasn't directly abusing her children but knew that her husband was abusing their daughters and her way of rationalising or justifying her lack of response to that was while he was asking them for it, she didn't have to give it to him. And I remember going home that night and saying to my husband, I actually wanted to punch her in the face. I mean, it's the first time I've had a very strong physical response to somebody and I was at work and I stopped working in child protection until my kids got much older because I suddenly realised something about what that mother had said had impacted it on me in such a way I couldn't do the best job for her and her children, so I needed to get out for a while. So it doesn't always work, but sometimes I think you have to kind of be aware of that, otherwise I think you kind of get too deep into things. Yeah, I suppose you have to know your own limits. So in my newest novel, Frog Music, I found that the young woman, the murder victim in my novel, who dies at 27, I found that she'd been sent to the industrial school, the San Francisco, you know, sort of reformatory, when she was a teenager, and her own parents had asked the judge to send her away, more or less, we can't handle her. Mm. And to me, this was the formative incident, you know, exactly the kind of damage that would have been done to her by being sent to an institution like that. And it, you know, it doesn't completely destroy her, but it, it shapes her and it leaves it, its mark on her. Mm. But what are you trying to achieve there? Are you trying to educate your readers? Are you trying to move them? Yeah, I would say mostly a novel is a device for making you feel. Now, hopefully it'll make you think as well. But, right. but I think the novel is a really sort of full-bodied emotional experience. And of course it's shaped, you know, the readers know it's not real. You know, in a way, you're, it's almost like a kind of a, a guided a guided walk through something. It's shaped and it's in some way safe, it's going to end. But I, I do want to make them feel. And do you ever weep when you're writing? I do sometimes. I was um, uh, finishing room at our local YMCA during the Christmas holidays, so I'd put my kids in the daycare there, as usual, you know, letting other people look after my kids so I could write about <laughs> Writing about it. being a mother. Yeah, so I've there done I was, that. working on a scene and crying as I reread it, and then I suddenly thought, I look absolutely barking mad here. <laughs> I have a question, okay, if you, if you write a book in which you present case histories that, for reasons of confidentiality, are not a real individual's named story. Are they composites of several or are they a real case where you've changed enough details to make it unrecognisable? They're composites of several. Nothing is ever based on an individual. Confidentiality is so incredibly important to, to the work I do and because I'm a clinician, you know, I, I, I do 25 clinical hours a week, I wouldn't want people to read this book that, that, that I've written and feel that they could never trust me and think, crikey, is she going to take my story one day and put it on a page and publish it? So they're an elision of people I've met, people I've met through supervising colleagues, people who've come through teams that I've run that I might not have had direct clinical experience with, but I've been the consultant on the team. Things that I've read about in terms of my own academic research or, you know, my own study. So, but they're real. They're real to me. And, you know, I've bizarrely found myself weeping when I was writing a death scene actually and, and I've never wept at work so it was quite a, a cathartic experience writing it in a way because I could be a clinician writing about clinical work but I could react to it as a, as a person which um, I don't generally do because when I finish work I drive home and then I'm a wife and a mum and so on so it kind of it was quite nice to be able to do that a bit weird but nice. Mm -hmm.